Public's been hot the last two weeks, and they're active again this week. Is it time to fade them? Do they come back down to earth? I'm going to give you the six most public sides, including a couple public dogs, for Week 7 NFL in just a moment. Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV, and this is your NFL Fade the Public video for this Week 7, Sunday, October the 20th. And we do have three very public sides this week, plus three additional public leans, which include a pair of ding-ding, double red flag alert, Two public underdogs this week. First, let's recap last week. For the second straight week, the public turned a profit. You know, Fade in the Public won each of the per- first four weeks of the season, but the last couple of weeks, the public has been hot, to say the least. In fact, overall, last week, uh, the six most public plays, they went four and two. But what's interesting is the public won all four games on favorites, but they lost the two public underdogs. And you know my favorite subset, of course, is fading public dogs. So even though the public came out ahead, if you use that subset, you actually went 2-0 fading the public with the dogs last week. Overall, though, including the additional lean, the public was 5-2 and two last week. Best week of the season, at, along with the week before in which they went 4-1. and one. So overall, public is 9-3 and three the last couple weeks on plays and leans, but just 18-18 eighteen and 18 overall in the season. 9-3 and three the last two weeks, that's because they were just 15-9 and nine or 9-15, and 15, rather, the first four weeks of the season. So once again, back-to-back winning weeks for the public, but often they come back down to earth when that's the case because they get overconfident, and there are six public selections this week. Three official, three additional leans. Let's get to the three most public plays, the three official public plays this week, and by far the most public play on the board, basically at all the different consensus sites and data that I log, without a doubt, is the Washington Commanders. And who would have thought we'd be saying the Commanders are one of the most public plays of the season, let alone Week 7. And yes, they have become a public team. In fact, the public has gone 2-1 and one back in the Commanders this year. The only time they failed was last week, when that was one of those public dogs. 6.5, Baltimore won by 7. Oh, that line closed 7, though, so it could have been a push depending on when you played it. Um, but the public isn't just playing the Commanders here. They're fading the Carolina Panthers, who look like the worst team in the NFL once again this season. Carolina's been a huge money burner. Not only are they 1-5 straight up, but they're also 1-5 against the point spread. And the public has gone against Carolina in five of the six weeks this season. And the public has gone 4-1, and one back, fading the Panthers, 2-1 and one back in the Commanders. So yeah, you do the math. In all games involving the Commanders and Panthers, the public is 6-2 and two this season. And once again, all the other games, uh, they've gone just 12-16. and 16. So once again... The reason the public has been going well overall the last couple weeks and is break even for the season is because they've gotten these two teams right. Once again, 4-1 and one the five times they faded the Panthers, and they're 2-1 and one the three times they've backed the Commanders, 2-0 and oh when the Commanders have been a favorite. By the way, the one time the Panthers covered this year and won straight up was against the Raiders in Week 3. That's the only time I have used them as a best bet. So I'm actually 1-0 and oh with Carolina this year. I don't play bad teams in general. And when I come on the video each week, I've told you it's hard to back Carolina. But the one spot I did agree with fading the public was way back in week three when they made the quarterback change with Andy Dalton. Now, I don't really have an opinion on the side here. I'm not getting in front of this juggernaut offense with Washington because Carolina does have a really bad defense. In fact, their pass defense is horrendously bad. I did a standalone solo video on this game, a five-minute deep dive. If you want more information, check that out. But one of the things I pointed out was that the Panthers have thrown about 6.5 yards per pass with Andy Dalton the last four games, as opposed to just 4.8 with Bryce Young. So they are a better offense with Dalton, and they should be able to somewhat take advantage of a mediocre Washington pass defense. Problem is, the Carolina pass defense is awful. They're giving up 34 points a game, almost 8 yards per pass, almost 70% completions on the season. So rookie rookie phenom uh, Jaden Daniels should have a field day averaging 75% and almost 8 yards per pass. So while this line is definitely inflated, it's gone from 8 to 9.5 already. uh, And the Commanders are by far the most public play this week. One of the most public plays I've seen this season. You know, buyer beware if you're going to hold your nose with Carolina. Uh, But once again, if it gets to 10 or more, I would start leaning Panthers. Um, Not my Washington Commanders are playing pretty good and they're coming off a loss. But once again... Uh, This line looks pretty inflated in what should be a high-scoring game. I actually think the over 51.5 is the best way to attack this game as opposed to either side. All right, that's the Commanders, by far the most public play here in Week 7. There are two other very public plays as well. I'd say these tie for the second most public plays, and they're the two other official public plays this week. Buffalo Bills, minus 9.5. Very similar to this Commanders game. Buffalo, minus 9.5. Advanced look-ahead line is going to be 7. Now it's 9.5, and we'll see if... um, 
also like Washington if it maybe hits that key number of 10. At that point, maybe there is some value with Tennessee, um, a team that is obviously struggling this year, 1-4 and four straight up and against the spread. They've been a huge money burner. I don't think the public's really backing Buffalo. I think they're more fading Tennessee in this spot as the Bills are still just 1-2 and two straight up in ATS their last three. But this is a spot where Tennessee's a tough team to trust right now. Um, they desperately need some time to uh, regroup and have a bye. Uh, they got that two weeks ago, came back against Indianapolis last week in what looked like a good spot and still lost outright as a favorite, 20-17. to 17. Uh, So once again, tough to trust the Titans, uh, and the public is fading pretty hard this week. Uh, but once again, Buffalo's just 1-2, and two, their last three, and uh, that win came by just three points barely on Monday night. Keep an eye on both the Commanders and Bills, though. Both are very public, and both are at 9.5. So if you're going to play the Dogs in either, I would wait and try to get a 10 on Sunday. All right, the one other very public play this week is the Philadelphia Eagles minus the 3 to 3.5. And, and as you check the Wager Talk live odd screen heading into the weekend, you'll see that both 3s and 3.5s and are readily available. And as you know, there's about an 8 to 9% chance an NFL road favorite is going to win by exactly 3 points. So if you like the Eagles, you lay the 3. If you're fading the public here and you like the Giants, you would take the 3.5, which should become more widely available as we head into the weekend. Um, I do think the Giants are worth a look in this game. The problem is their offensive line is just beat up. They've had so many offensive injuries over recent weeks, and their offensive line is really in shambles. Um, They had that breakout against Seattle offensively, but they've done absolutely nothing in the other games. In fact, their other five games this season, they've scored 21 or less every time, including just seven points last week on Sunday night at home against the Bengals. Uh, A lot of offensive injuries. I do think it's a decent spot to fade the Eagles here. Uh, but once again, uh, just don't trust that beat-up Giants offense. If you are going to play the Giants, though, make sure you get a plus 3.5 or more as those numbers are starting to become readily available. Uh, Eagles remain an overrated team. They're just 1-3 and three against the spread uh, their last four games. And this is a team um, against Cleveland last week, barely won 20-16. And Cleveland's looked just horrendous. Um, Eagles had no turnovers in that game and still were able to barely win. Uh, but once again, two teams that are probably struggling here. Giants offense really beat up, uh, but I would still lean Giants at plus three and a half or more, which is a key number. This is a spot where maybe you do look to fade the public. All right, those are the three official public plays this week, Commanders, Bills, and Eagles. We've got three additional public leans, including two dogs. Ding, ding, double red flag, two public dogs this week on those additional leans. Going to get to those for you in a moment Just want to let you know that I don't just blindly fade the public. We use this as a filter, right? It's one of the many handicapping techniques I use each and every week, just part of the overall arsenal. Uh, But I hope you are finding this information useful. If you are, please comment below. Let me know where you agree or disagree with the public. What NFL plays do you like this week? I do truly read all the comments and I reply back. Include some player props too. Always love to hear from those NFL player props. I know many of you do quite well with the player props. Thumbs up, like too. If you're liking these videos, comment below and also give it a thumbs up, like. Boom. You did it. It took one second. I appreciate it. And make sure you subscribe and hit that bell as well for instant alerts when these videos go live each and every week, including all my free play solo videos throughout the week as well. Hey, speaking of solo free play videos, been doing a lot of college and pro football this week, baseball as well, but basketball starts next week. This is ultimately the best time of year to be an all sports client because over the next several weeks is the only time of year that you get football, baseball, and basketball all going at the same time. And right now, we have a very special offer this weekend at wagertalk.com where you can get the rest of my all sports for 2024 for free. Now, let me set this up for you. We cashed again on Friday night heading into the weekend as I do this video. We're now 9-1 and one over the last nine days, 90% over the past week in all sports. Yeah, very selective. Maybe one to two plays during the week, three to four on Saturday, two to three on Sunday. I'm very selective, but the selectivity pays off and the low volume equals high profit, and nobody has won more units this year in all sports best bets than I have. We're getting closer to 180. You know, some of the videos this week, I said over 170. Now we're getting closer to 180 units of profit this season, and that's just nine and a half months in, this year that is, just nine and a half months in in 2024. Get the next two months plus for free when you sign up in advance for 2025. You're going to get an instant $200 discount on the 2025 one-year package, And you're going to get the next two plus months included as a bonus for free. It's a no-brainer. It's the best offer I've ever made for those that want to take a long-term consistent investment approach. And it gets it down to about a dollar per play for every football, baseball, basketball, college, and pro best bet every day and night. All of 2025 plus the rest of 24 included for free. Don't delay. 
sooner you sign up, the more days you get for free this year when you sign up for 2025. And you can get on board the number one ranked all sports service this year, up nearly almost 180 units. And by the time you see this video after this weekend, we might be up to 190. I know many of you have sat back for weeks now and said, I'll wait till Steve has an off week. Well, we just keep winning. And look, we're not going to win every play or not every week. It doesn't work that way. But you don't want to try to time the market because if you've done so, you've sat back and missed four or five straight winning weeks now, including this 9-1 and one run over the last nine days. College and pro football into the weekend, 27-14, and 14, number one this regular season in best bets. Also, baseball finished the regular season 31-13. and 13. We're on a 3-0 and sweep over the past week in the playoffs. NBA starts next Tuesday, this coming week. I'm number one the last three years and also number one the last of the history of wager talk in units one in the NBA, also number one in college hoops a couple years ago. My point is I do well in every sport I release. I don't release a sport unless I do well. College and pro football, college and pro basketball, major league baseball, five sports. You get every play every day. I've done this for 29 straight years as a full-time professional. If I have a game, my clients get it as well. It's that simple. Follow along. Build your bankroll. You can see every best bet I release recapped every day on my page at Wager Talk. You can click on the best bets after they start to see the analysis and also free plays. I'm selective. Those last cuts are very strong opinions still, and I post them as bonus free plays. So check them out on my page, but be sure to get that all sports, all access one year pass, which gets the rest of this year included for free. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. All right, let's get to those three bonus public leans for you this week in the NFL. I'll get to the two public dogs in a moment, but another game the public was on, I'll call it an additional lean, is the LA Rams minus the seven points. That goes at four o'clock Eastern. Um, Rams are getting some public sentiment this week, uh, despite uh, you know not having a great record overall this season. Uh, the Rams surprisingly are a public play this week, but as is often the case, it's not the public backing the Rams; it's more the public fading. Uh, the Las Vegas Raiders. The Rams are just one and four straight up and against the spread. Raiders are two and four straight up and against the spread, but the Raiders are in terrible current form. Uh, back to back losses. They're now one and three straight up in ATS their last four. Losses by 16 and 19 point margins the last two weeks is only a three point dog against Denver and Pittsburgh, and that's enough to get the public fading them hard. Uh, despite the fact the Rams are just one and four straight up in ATS this season, but they did have an impressive win. That one win, of course was against San Francisco as a six-point dog. Rams are also coming in here off a bye week. I think that's another reason some people think there might be a spark to an offense that has scored 19 or less, or actually 20 or less, in all four losses this season. But once again, pretty hefty number here to be laying with a 1-4 and four straight up an ATS team laying a full touchdown, but the public wants nothing to do with the Raiders, and it's hard to disagree. Uh, they've got some dissension in the locker room among the team itself, and that definitely showed the last two weeks when they've been blown out against mediocre Denver and Pittsburgh squads. So once again, the Rams minus seven, an additional public lean on Sunday afternoon. Also, two public dogs getting some love. These are both additional leans, uh, but I always like to bring up public dogs for you because, as you know, if you're new to the video, by the way, the premise is the public normally plays favorites and overs. So whenever you see them on an underdog or an under, it's an additional red flag. And two public dogs are getting some love this week. And this is often the case when a high-profile team is getting points, the public starts to all of a sudden play them. And that's the case with the Detroit Lions. Huge game against Minnesota. These two teams are combined 9-1 and one straight up on the season. And the public is fading the perfect 5-0 and straight up and against the spread Vikings. The Vikings have covered every single game this season. So you wouldn't think the public would be fading them. But they just can't resist when they see a good team like Detroit catching a point and a half. Uh, so once again, Detroit is a public dog this week in what should be one of the best NFL games of the week. Another high-profile dog, which is getting some public sentiment as well, is the Kansas City Chiefs. And this, of course, is the Super Bowl rematch at San Francisco, 425 Eastern on Fox. Uh, just like the other game, plus one and a half. So the Lions and Chiefs, plus one and a half each, are public dogs. I'd call those additional leans this week. Um Look, Kansas City, Andy Reid off a bye and as an underdog. Mahomes as an underdog, it's very difficult to fade that. I get that. Uh, but the Niners are still a really good team, and they do have Super Bowl revenge here. Um, also, was that the bye sign maybe for San Fran? Pretty impressive outburst on Thursday night last week, putting up over um, 480 total yards of offense at Seattle. Keep in mind that the Chiefs might have the bye, but San Francisco played Thursday night, so they get the mini bye. Um, about a week and a half off versus two weeks off. So both teams should be well-rested. should be a great game. And once again, this is Super Bowl revenge for San Francisco at home. 
Um, I do think that's probably the side here, but hey, look, I get it. I can understand why the public is on Kansas City. Andy Reid off a of buy has been money in the bank for decades, and Mahomes as an underdog has been a pretty strong play as well. But I think San Francisco is just as good, and the current line of one and a half does look a little bit short. You know, home field's only worth a couple points now in the NFL, but when you get these Class A teams playing each other, home field becomes worth a little bit more. And San Francisco holds a substantial offensive edge in this game. 6.8 yards per play this year, 8.5 yards per pass. Kansas City just 5.7 yards per play, just 7.4 yards per pass. Um, Chiefs a little bit better defensively. Uh, That could be the difference in this game. But once again, San Francisco does hold the offensive edge. Uh, Regardless, the public is leaning towards the Chiefs plus one and a half. So once again, three additional public leans on the Rams minus seven, and then two public dog leans this week, the Lions and Chiefs, both plus one and a half. Hey, once again, comment below. Those are the six most public sides this week for Week 7 NFL Sunday, October the 20th. Where do you agree or disagree? What games do you like this week? Include some player props as well. What about some teaser selections? I read the comments. I reply back. I love the support here on Wager Talk TV. Don't forget, thumbs up, like, click subscribe, and once again, click the bell for instant alerts. So you know when this Fade the Public video goes up every weekend, you can be the first to watch. And also throughout the week, all the free play videos. I did about 10 plus college and pro football solo free play videos, including both the Sunday night game, Jets Steelers, also the Monday night game, Raiders Buccaneers. So I do a lot of the high profile national TV games for you as well, because I know those are games of interest. You know, a lot of times they're free plays, they're light opinions, maybe treat them as a 1% fun bet. But once again, if you're serious about winning, You don't want to just get the free play videos, obviously. You want my personal best bets because it's quite simple. If I have a play, my clients get it as well at wagertalk.com. And quite simply, we are crushing it. I know I say it every week when I come on here, but it's the truth. You can go back and see a recap every single night of every best bet I release. There's a running last 20 tally at the bottom of the page. It updates every night after the best bets are finished. And you can click on them to see the analysis as well. So if you're building your bankroll, if you're new, if you want to see how I do things, check out the previous best bets. We enter the weekend on a 9-1, 90% run over the last nine days and nights. That's baseball and football. And now basketball starts next week. And I'm number one the last three years NBA combined. Number one all-time profit in the history of wagertalk.com and the NBA. And that starts next week. Football is number one this season. We enter the weekend 27-14 and on best bets this regular season, college and pro football. And once again, baseball finished the regular season 31-13. and Playoffs have been profitable as well, including a 3-0 sweep so far this week in the MLB playoffs. It is truly the best time of the year to be an all-sports, all-access client because football, baseball, and basketball is all about to go at the same time. And you can get the rest of 2024 for free when you sign up for 2025. No promo code needed. It's on my page right now, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. Now, if you're a football-only client, nothing wrong with that. I do have two special football promo codes for this weekend. Rest of college for $2.99, rest of the NFL for $3.99. I do have promo codes for those special prices. So if you want football only, that's fine. I do have a special package for you. So go take a look, see what works best, and be sure to check out those daily free plays as well. I post a free play almost each and every day on my page, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Thanks for watching. Hope you found the video useful. Comment below, thumbs up, like, subscribe, and click that bell. And don't forget to also follow me on social media. I'm becoming more active on Instagram. A lot of you love Instagram, so I'm posting some free videos there as well, little quick one-minute hitters. So be sure to follow me on Instagram and also X on Twitter, as always, at Steve Merrill. You know the deal. Two R's, one L. At Steve Merrill, two R's, one L. At Steve Merrill on both X and Instagram. And stay tuned here to Wager Talk TV for some more great free betting content coming up next.